Okay, class. Let's see, the language of medicine. This is probably one of the longest chapters in medical terminology, and it is the musculoskeletal system. Uh, this is right up my alley, so this will be, unfortunately, probably one of the longest uh, uh, lectures that you're going to have. Uh, but it's a great lecture, uh, really something that you want to uh, spend some time on. Um, chapter goals, define terms relating to the structure and function of bones, joints, and muscles. Describe the process of bone formation and growth. Locate the name and major bones of the body. Analyze the combining forms, prefixes, and suffixes used to describe bones, joints, and muscles. Explain various musculoskeletal diseases, conditions, and terms related to bone fractures. Describe important lab tests, clinical procedures, musculoskeletal system, recognize relevant abbreviations, apply your knowledge to understanding. So pretty much what we've done for all the chapters, and this is just another chapter. Unfortunately, this one you're going to see a lot in the clinic, and it's something that you probably want to get familiar with. Now let's uh, introduce the musculoskeletal system is bones, muscles, and joints of the body. Bones are structural support and protection of internal organs. Muscles, internal and external movement. Joints, where two bones come together. Uh, the type is determined by the need for flexibility. Uh, tendons, attach or bind muscles to bone. Ligaments, bind bones to bones. Now, Another terminology is that you usually sprain, SP, sprain ligaments, and you'll ST, strain muscles. So make sure you use the terminology correctly. You sprain ligaments like you sprain your ankle, but you strain like you strain your back. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you might go see an orthopedist, you might go see a rheumatologist, you might see a physiatrist, or you might see an osteopathic physician. Um, if anybody's broken a bone, uh, you've probably gone to an orthopedic or a DO. Okay. Now, <clears throat> ossification, let's say you break your bone, or just bone formation in general, is the replacement of cartilage with bone. So first of all, you're gonna have these three types of cells. Uh, osteoblast that produces immature bony tissue that replaces the cartilage. Then you have an osteocyte which will nourish and maintain the bone. But then you have osteoclast that will reabsorb or digest bone and that will remodel the bone. So again osteoblast will produce, osteocytes maintains, and osteoclast will reabsorb. Now Osteoblasts and osteoclasts work to deposit and tear down bone throughout life, so there's a balance. The skeleton is a source of calcium. Uh, proper formation of bone depends on sources of calcium, phosphorus, and vitamin D. Calcium phosphate enzyme helps create hard bones from these sources. Now, if you drink Diet Coke, you'll notice that Diet Soda has a high amount of phosphorus. Now, if you have a high amount of extracellular phosphorus, what's going to happen is it's going to leach the calcium from your bones. That's why drinking a lot of Diet Soda is bad for you because it leaches the calcium from your bones and you can get osteoporosis based on that. Now you're thinking, okay, but tell how much is a lot? Well, I mean, if you had one can here, uh, here and there, that's not going to leach the calcium. But those people that have one to two Diet Cokes a day for many years, well, yes, then you run the risk of having osteoporosis. Um, I had a co-worker. He used to drink one of those big gulps uh, uh, every single day. And yes, indeed, he did end up with osteoporosis. Um, so bone, bone formation, uh, reservoir for calcium storage. Uh, calcium, of course, is necessary for nerve transmittal to muscle, including heart muscle and muscles attached to bones. Um, calcium levels are maintained in the blood by the parathyroid glands, which secretes a hormone to release calcium from the bone. Now, <clears throat> the long, short, flat sesamoid bones, there's the diaphysis, which is the shaft. You have the epiphysis, which is the end. You have the metaphysis, which is cone-like flared portion between the end and the shaft. And then you have the growth plates, or called the epiphyseal line or plate. Uh, growth plate where cartilage replaced by bone for bone growth. Uh, and these are usually found in the young 
skeleton, uh, those that are growing, so we can see these epiphyseal lines. If you have a fracture along the epiphyseal pline, um, then that could be a problem because the bone can stop growing. Um, so we want to be careful with fractures, and those usually occur uh, with skateboarding, snowboarding, etc., etc., any extreme sports. Now, interior bone structure, epiphyseal line, you have cancellous bone, you have compact bone, you have a medullary cavity, and then you have a periosteum. So if you look at these, uh, here's the epiphyses. Here's that epiphyseal line, that growth plate that we talked about. Here's the diaphyses, here's the metaphyses, and here's the epiphyses. So you have growth plates on both ends, and basically long bones will grow along this line. When this epiphyseal line closes around 18 in long bones, 25 in the vertebrae. So you re technically you do grow until you're about the age of 25. Okay. Now the ends of bones are covered by articular cartilage in the joint. And that articular cartilage cushions the joint and allows it to move smoothly. Now you're only born with a finite amount of articular cartilage, meaning you can't make more articular cartilage. So once it goes away, unfortunately, that's it. Compact bone contains aversion systems for blood vessels, nerves, and yellow, which is mostly fat. So if you like to eat bone marrow, that's what you're eating, not of humans, of course. Um, cancellous, that's spongy trabecular bone. Spaces contain red bone marrow with elements for blood formation. So again, the red bone marrow is found in the cancellous spongy bone and the yellow bone is found in the compact. Uh, again, yellow marrow is chiefly mat, a flat fat and red marrow, which is rich with blood vessels and immature and mature blood cells in various stages of development. In later life, replaced with yellow marrow. So hemoptysis, Hemoptysis is the production of all types of blood cells in the bone marrow. Now, what are the bone processes in depression? So these are ways that we will uh, label them so that we know that ligaments and muscles will attach to these bones. So you have processes which serve as attachments, but you have depressions which are openings or hollow regions to help join bones together. So if you look at this bone here, you've got a bone head, which is the head of the femur. Uh, you have the bone neck uh, here. You have the trochanter. This is a greater trochanter. This is a lesser trochanter. If you were an anatomy bone, uh, uh, if you're an anatomy class, I would have all the specific parts. This is very, very simple. This is the epicondyle, but this is technically the lateral epicondyle. This is the medial epicondyle. This is lateral and medial. Um, here's a humerus, which is your arm bone. Here's the head of the humerus. Again, here's a greater tuberosity, and this would be a lesser tuberosity. Here's the olecranon fossa, and here's the lateral epicondyle, and here's a condyle here. Okay. Here's a view of your cranium so that if you were to cut the top of your head off and remove the brain, this is what you're looking down. Um, okay, so you're looking from top down. Here's the frontal bone. Here's the ethmoid bone. Here's the sphenoid bone. Uh, the pituitary gland would sit in the cella tersica here. Here's the parietal bone right here. Here's the occipital bone. And the foramen magnus is where the spinal cord would exit right in here. Okay. Now here's a lateral view. So here's your jaw, which is the mandible. Here's the ethmoid bone. Here's the sphenoid bone. Here's the frontal bone. Uh, sutures separate the bones together. So here's the coronal suture. Here's the parietal bone. Here's the temporal bone. Occipital bone. Um, this is right behind, your ear would be right here, so right behind your ear would be the mastoid process. And here's a styloid process right here. And if you have TMJ, this is the TMJ joint right here. Now again, this is the uh, medical terminology class, so I don't expect you to memorize all and the the terminology here, but you won't have to label any of this on any of the quizzes at all.
the frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone, the TMJ, mastoid process, styloid process. You have the occipital bone that houses the foramen magnum. You have the sphenoid bone that houses the cella tersica. And then you have the ethmoid bone. Here's the chordal suture. Here's the zygomatic bone. So really, the, the cheek structure right here, the zygomatic bone right here, is real, what really will determine your race right here. Um, you're either Caucasian, Mongoloid, or African American, and that's based on this cheek structure, which is basically the zygomatic bone. Uh, and then you have these maxillary bones. You have the vomer bone. Uh, you have the mental foramen and the mandibular bone. Uh, some of the other facial bones, you have nasal bones, lac lacrimal bones, maxillary bones, mandibular bones, zygomatic bones, vomer. The sinuses, uh, sinuses are air cavities located in facial and cranial bone to lighten the skull and warm and moisten the air as it passes into the respiratory system. Uh, the vertebral column, um, again you have 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, so I eat breakfast at 7, lunch at 12, and uh, dinner at 5, so 7, 12, and 5. They gave you the curvatures. Here's the cervical curve, thoracic curve, and then the lumbar curve and sacral curve. So in, out, in, out. Again, you have 26 bone vertebrae segments from base of the skull to the tailbone in five divisions and separated by pads of cartilage called the intervertebricular disc. So you guys have probably heard of, oh, I herniated my L4, L5 or such and such. Well, that's the disc in between the bones that they're talking about. So you have a cervical region, a thoracic region, a lumbar, or sacral, and then you have a coccyx, which is your tailbone. In your thoracic region, you have the clavicle, scapula, sternum, and ribs. In the pelvis region, you have the pelvic girdle, ilium, ischium, pubis. The arm, you have the humerus, ulna, radius, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. If you have the bones of the leg and foot, uh, here's the talus, which will articulate with the tibia. Here's your calcaneus, which is your heel. Your midfoot are your metatarsals and distal are your phalanges. Um, you have your femur. There's the acetabulum. Patella is your kneecap. Tibia is your shin. Uh, uh, the ankle, the medial malleolus. The outside of your ankle is the lateral malleolus and the fibula. The talus is what attaches to the tibia from your foot. Uh, you have the tarsals, calcaneus, and the talus and the metatarsals and phalanges. So let's look at this vocabulary. You have the acetabulum and the acromion. So acetabulum is a rounded depression in the pelvis that joins the femur, forming the hip joint. So the head of the femur will go into the acetabulum. You have the acromion, which is an outward extension of the shoulder blade, forming the point of the shoulder. Then you have bones, bone depressions, and bone processes. So bone is a dense, hard, connective tissue composing the skeleton. You have a bone depression, that's opening or hollow region serving as a connection for bones or passageway for blood vessels and nerves. You have bone process, which is an enlarged area that extends from bones as an attachment for muscles, tendons, and ligaments. Calcium cancellous bone and cartilage. Calcium is a mineral constituted of bone. Cancellous bone is spongy, porous bone tissue in the inner part of the bone. But cartilage is this flexible connective tissue. You have collagen, compact bone, cranial bones. Collagen is dense connective tissue, protein, strands found in bone and other tissues. Uh, compact bone, uh, it's hard, dense bone tissue usually found around another outer portion. You have cranial bones, uh, which are skull bones. You have the ethmoid, frontal, occipital, parietal, sphenoid, and temporal. Again, anatomy class, we would memorize all these bones. For right now, just memorize the terminology. Uh, again, you won't have to label anything for the quizzes. Uh, diaphysis, disc, and epiphyseal plate. Uh, diaphysis is the shaft or mid portion of a long bone. The disc is a flat, round plate structure. Uh, epiphyseal plate is a cartilaginous area that ends of long bones where lengthwise growth takes place in immature skeleton. 
uh, the epiphyses, facial bones, and fontanelles. Uh, epiphyses is the, each end of the long bone, area beyond the epiphyseal plate or the growth plate. Facial bones, bones of the face, uh, lacrimal, mandibular, uh, maxillary, nasal, vomer, and zygomatic. A fontanelle are the baby's soft spots, so they're incomplete bone formation between the skull bones of an infant. Uh, you have the foramen magnon, haversion canals, and a ligament. Foramen magna is the opening of the sipital bone where which the spinal cord passes. Haversion canals are minute spaces filled with blood vessels found in compact bone. And the ligament is fibrous connective tissue that binds bones to other bones. Malleolus, manubrium, mastoid process. So malleolus is a round process of both sides of the ankle. So you have the medial malleolus and a lateral malleolus. Uh, manubrium is the upper portion of the sternum. Uh, when you do CPR, you'll be pushing on the manubrium. If you go too far down, you can break off the xiphoid process. The mastoid process is a round projection of the temporal bone behind your ear. Medullary cavity, metaphysis, olecranon. Medullary cavity is a central hollowed out area in the shaft of a long bone. Uh, metaphysis is a flared portion of long bone uh, between the diaphysis and the epiphyseal plate. Uh, lecranon is a large process at the proximal end of the ulna, so if you're, that's technically your elbow. Uh, orthopedist, osseous tissue, ossification. Orthopedist is a medical doctor who specializes in bone, joint, and muscle conditions. Osseous tissue is bone tissue. Ossification is a process of bone formation. Ossification, osteoblast versus osteoclast. Um, ossification is a process of bone formation, but make sure you know what an osteoblast is. Bone cell that helps form, okay, blast, form bony tissue, but a clast, um, bone cell that absorbs and removes unwanted. Okay, so just think blast, you blast uh, something, you're, you're forming it, and class, uh, clash, you know, something's clashing. When you clash it, you'll usually remove something. Uh, periosteum, phosphorus, and physiatrist. Uh, periosteum is a membrane surrounding bones rich in blood vessels and nerve tissue. Uh, phosphorus, uh, mineral substance found in bones, combination with calcium. Uh, again, don't drink Diet Coke. And a physiatrist is a medical doctor who specializes in rehabilitation. Uh, pubic symphysis, red bone marrow, and ribs. Pubic symphysis is an area of confluence of two pubic bones in the pelvis. Uh, the red bone marrow is found in cancellous bones, site of homo hemoptysis. In ribs, you have 12 pairs. Uh, ribs 1 through 7 are true ribs. That means they have a true connection to the sternum. Uh, numbers 8, 9, and 10 are false ribs, meaning that they share a common uh, connection. And then floating ribs are pairs 11 and 12. Uh, cella turska, sinus and styloid process. So the cella turska is a depression in the sphenoid bone where the pituitary gland is located. Uh, sinus is a hollow air cavity within the bone. The styloid process, pole-like process extending downward from the temporal bone on each side of the skull. Suture, temporal mandibular joint, tendon. Suture, a uh, movable joint between the bones, temporal mandibular connection on either side of the head between the temporal bone of the skull and the mandibular bone of the jaw. Uh, tendon is a fibrous connective tissue that binds muscles to bones. Trabeculae is a vertebrae. Uh, I'm sorry, trabeculae, vertebrae, xiphoid process, and yellow bone marrow. So trabeculae is supporting bundles of bony fibers and cancellous bone. Vertebrae, individual segment of the spine composed of the vertebral body, vertebral arch, spinous process, transverse process, and lamina. Xiphoid process, lower narrow portion of the sternum. Yellow bone marrow, fatty tissue found in the medullary cavity of most adult long bones. All right. Quick quiz, hot shot. The knuckle-like process at the end of a bone near a joint are the condyles. And... The process of bone formation is called ossification.